Have you ever heard of the phrase diagnostic adenosine? It's where somebody will use adenosine to be able to differentiate between different rhythms, such as SVT, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, different things like that. Well, it can be a harmful and potentially fatal practice to do so. So let's talk about the different reasons why you should be sure of your ECGs before you push adenosine. In this phenomenal GEMS article, Dr. Jeremy Brzezinski breaks down why we have to understand ECGs before we give adenosine. It can be a fatal mistake to give adenosine in certain uh, cardiac dysrhythmias. And so let's get a good understanding as to those dysrhythmias and exactly what's happening in the heart. First off, let's talk about what adenosine does. So the top and the bottom of the heart we all know that the SA node is where the electricity originates, passes through the atria down to the atrioventricular node. The AV node holds on for 120 to 200 milliseconds, also called your PR interval, holds on to that electricity, then kicks it out through the bundle of hiss into the bundle branches and out to the rest of the ventricles, right? So, the reason for the AV node is to separate the top and the bottom of the heart. And so we get a boom, 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 instead of just both the top and the bottom firing at the exact same time, right? So when there's PSVT, um, when we have AV nodal reentry tachycardia, stuff like that, it's a great idea to cut out that AV node for six to 10 seconds with adenosine. Okay, it basically allows any of those pathways in that area to reset. And then the SA node, that electricity is passing down through the AV node. When it reinitiates after the adenosine wears off, it's going to be a nice, clean, organized rhythm again. Okay, so it's a good thing for PSVT and for AV nodal reentry tachycardia. What is it not good for? What can it cause problems with? So WPW. In WPW, instead of having the normal pathways that we were just talking about, you also have an accessory pathway, and that's called the Bundle of Kent. Okay? So as that's all running down there, that electricity is passing through the atria, goes down, and the AV node pauses, there's no pause, there's no slow pathways through the Bundle of Kent. So it actually starts to leak electricity through what's called the annulus fibrosis. It's a fibrous layer that doesn't allow any electricity to get from the top to the bottom. It's what makes sure that all the electricity goes through the AV node, okay? So it allows that electricity through that bundle of Kent to continue on, right? Since there's no pause, and we talked about how the PR interval, that's that pause that's right there in the AV node, and there's no pause there, we start to get electricity leaking through. It's what creates that delta wave, right? So that delta wave is the hallmark sign of WPW. All right, now looking at that, what happens if I give adenosine and get rid of this for six to 10 seconds? Well, normally it's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, if you have a normal sinus rhythm up above the AV node, a normal rhythm will continue to operate. The AV node comes back in, and now all of a sudden, that electricity is going to basically create a log jam as it's coming back up and through. It's going to hit this, and it's going to prevent it from continuing to depolarize the ventricles. It's not a huge deal. Okay, but here's what can happen if you have atrial fibrillation and we give adenosine. So in atrial fibrillation, the electricity is sporadic, right? There's multiple foci, and it's just basically quivering up at the top. The top of your heart is literally quivering. There's no concise, organized rhythm up above that AV node, okay? If we have that pathway through the bundle of Kent, then basically some of that electricity is continuing to leak through 
because that electricity up above it is basically draining down through that bundle of Kent. But the nice thing about the AV node is the AV node is catching that electricity and because it's got that repole depole pattern to it, it, it depolarizes and then it has to slowly repull and depolarizes, slowly repulls, and it creates a good, nice, organized rhythm out of the bottom of the heart. It's not regular because of the AFib above it, but it's an organized rhythm below the ventricle, right? It's organized electricity that follows the normal pathways. When it comes up here, again, like we just talked about, it log jams there. It stops the spread of that fibrillation that's leaking through that pathway, okay? So because of that, you may not see a wide QRS in WPW with AFib, all right? So if we have AFib and WPW and we use adenosine, we cut this out, get rid of that AV node for that six to 10 seconds, what's gonna end up happening? We're going to see all of that electricity that we have just log jammed continue. So that electricity is gonna continue on through here and you can actually end up getting ventricular fibrillation if we take the AV node out of this equation because all of that AFib above it is just basically leaking into the ventricles for that six to 10 seconds and it can end up causing V-fib, deadly, right? So super important, if a patient has WPW and AFib, we cannot give adenosine, especially if they have a wide complex tachycardia that is irregular, that is indicative of WPW with AFib. Now here's the surprising thing, of patients that have WPW, 30% also have atrial fibrillation, up to 30% per some studies. That's crazy. That's an incredible amount. So we have to be super cautious and very smart about our adenosine administration in these patients. Now, what about WPW and A flutter? Surprisingly enough, 7% of WPW patients also have atrial flutter. So what can end up happening in these patients we get that circling effect up in the atria, in atrial flutter, because of an accessory pathway that's basically causing 300 beats per minute. Now the AV node is gonna be catching those and doing exactly what we just talked about beforehand. It's gonna be creating a nice organized rhythm down below the bottom half of the heart, down in the ventricles, right? So we have a good, nice, organized rhythm. So if we don't have that EV node and we end up kicking out for, you know, six to 10 seconds, of course, that electricity from up here is gonna find its way down here. And if it's going at 300 beats a minute, it's possible that this can catch down in the ventricles and cause a rhythm at 300 beats per minute. If that happens, it's not sustainable. That's going to turn into a, a ventricular tachycardia because the ventricles are gonna to try to take over. Um, it's going to end up degrading into a cardiac arrest. So it's incredibly important that we understand in WPW with atrial fib, with atrial flutter, we cannot be giving adenosine for these patients. We could possibly kill them. If you guys enjoyed this content, you want more, please follow us at Master Your Medics. Please subscribe and join us for more. Thank you.